Welcome to CompTIA's A Plus course. This is going to be the 220-1001, but this is the core one. Just like CompTIA's had for, well, I'm trying to think, years and years and years, uh, the A Plus is always two exams. And what we're going to talk about in this one is the first exam, right? So the second one is the 220-1002. I know, right? Big stretch for you to have to think about that one. Uh, one thing I do want you to focus on as you're going through these videos, and I know you're going to reach out and look for other ways to study and other resources, is pay attention to the core one and core two. Uh, I don't know how that's going to take off just yet. All right, this is going to be one of the first A plus courses out there for this new iteration. So I don't know if they're going to, to jump on the 1001, 1002 nomenclature or the core one and core two. So I put those in parentheses out there. Uh, CompTIA has that on their website, so I was just sticking with everything uh, that they had that may help you, you know, in getting prepared for this exam. Now, this first part, this is only the 1001 exam, the core one exam, so all the objectives, all the topics we're going to talk about in this video series, we've got five domains to cover, is just the first test. Now, this course, all right, like I said, it is the... Well, I can't say that for certainty, I guess, but I know it's going to be one of the first new A-plus courses out there for CompTIA. Uh, so uh, when I was approached about this course, what I decided to do is just follow right along with the exam objectives. I went out to CompTIA's website, comptia.org. I highly recommend you go get the exam objectives out there. They've got both of them. Uh, if, you, if you go to their website, uh, you know, you click on the A+, plus, you, you go to first get asked, I think if it's like the certifications or membership site, I think is the other one. Uh, go to the certifications page, all right, and then you want to go to the A+. Plus. Uh, once you go to the A+, plus, on the bottom right-hand corner, you're going to scroll down some. You have to put in some information like your name, email, and stuff, uh, what your study habits are, when you plan on taking the exam, and you can download the objectives. Now, they don't flood you with tons of spam email. It's just very good information to have. Okay, so I highly recommend you go get those uh, from CompTIA. If you've already done that, fantastic, you're ahead of the curve, and we'll just go ahead and move on right there. Now, Core 1, it has a maximum of 90 questions on the exam. And they say maximum because, uh, when did CompTIA start that? They weren't the first, but anyway, they have performance-based questions now, which means it's not all just A, B, C, or D, or the multiple type uh, multiple choice type questions that you may be familiar with or accustomed to when you take exams, right? So now they're actually going to have you drag and drop or move things around or or click hot spots, all right? It's not just multiple choice. So you may have like a little testlet or simlet, all right? And that may be question number two, but inside of there you have three questions. Well, that's actually questions two, three, four. Right, so that's why it says maximum of 90 questions on the exam. I took this right off the website, by the way. They do have multiple choice questions, performance-based questions, 90 minutes to complete the exam. 675 is a passing score on a scale of 100 to 900. So you show up, you got 100 points. Good job, right? Uh, <laughs> and when I say show up, I mean show up to sit for the exam after you study for a little bit. Uh, so hopefully everybody makes 900s out there. Uh, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't have said that. High 800s, let's do that, right? High 800s, uh, and everybody is successful. So what kind of things we're gonna look at, right? Like I said, there's five domains that we need to know, all right? The first one we're gonna look at is mobile devices, right? Now that accounts for about 14% of the exam. Also, another thing I want you to really focus on are the percentages here, right? Now, these are not uh, set in concrete, so to speak, saying, well, if I have you know, so many questions, a maximum of 90 questions, 14% of those have to come from domain one. No, that's not what CompT is saying. They're saying about 14% is going to come from that area, about 20% from this area, 27% from this area. All right, so you, you won't have a leg to stand on. I've talked to students before and they're like, well, I numbered it out. Nah, 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 nah. That's not what they're saying. All right, about 14%. So, what I do with these percentages is I look at them and I say, hey, I look at these five domains. If you take a look at the screen right now, right? If you look at hardware, number three, that's 27%. The troubleshooting is also 27%. In my head, well, that's a lot more than 14 and 12%. So 
So if I'm crunched for time or if my employer or somebody is saying, hey, I need you to go get this done right now, I'm focusing most of my attention on the higher percentages. I'm not saying don't study, in this case, domain one and number four, maybe not put as much effort or time into those if you're on that crunch, right? If you've got 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, six months, then you have all the time you need, right? Especially for six months. I don't think I've ever taken six months to study for anything, but you got all the time in the world you need, all right? So then you would want to slow down and focus on that. I'm talking to those folks that, you know, got told yesterday that, hey, I need you to go get A plus certified, you know, in, in 30 days, right? And you may think, well, 30 days, that's nothing. Yeah, but you got to think, you know, maybe they got family, maybe they have work, you know, they got cheerleading at night, soccer games, and they, so 30 days comes pretty quick. So anyway, these are the five domains, mobile devices, networking, hardware. We'll get into some virtualization and cloud computing, and then we're going to wrap it up with troubleshooting, hardware and network troubleshooting which is kind of a challenge in itself. A lot of these are challenging uh, to teach in a, in a virtual uh, environment here, this video on demand environment here, uh, without you being right here with me. So when I say, hey, this is the computer, you can't turn your head, all right? We're gonna do our best, all right, to try to get every angle. I've got tons of pictures in here. So um, anyway, I'm sure I'm gonna say this again. These are the five domains we're gonna uh, take a look at. So on mobile devices, the very first chapter, first domain we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about all of these things. Again, I simply copied and pasted from their website on all these objectives because I'm going to pretty much follow them to a T. All right. So when it says given a scenario, install and configure laptop hardware and components, we're going to talk about laptop hardware and components. We're going to talk about the keyboard. We'll talk about the shell around it. We'll talk about the microphone, the webcam, uh, the hard drives, the RAM inside, right? All of those components when you think of a laptop. And then I'm not going to read all these off to you because uh, you're big boys and girls. I'm sure you can read this stuff, but we'll talk about the display laptop features, uh, various types of other mobile devices, ports, accessories. Uh, we're going to look at network connectivity and application support, and then device synchronization. All right. Now, also with this one, <clears throat> I'm going to make some assumptions on some of this stuff. All right. Uh, it's not hard to make assumptions today for mobile devices because everybody has a mobile device. So if I say, well, you've probably done this before, I'm assuming you've done that kind of thing before. In domain two, the networking domain, uh, I'm going to try not to get on my soapbox in this domain. Uh, but networking and cybersecurity are probably my favorite areas. And I really get excited when I'm talking about networking. Uh, so I'm probably going to get excited about this domain, this chapter. Uh, but I'm going to try not to turn it into a network plus or like a networking course, okay? Uh, I'll try to keep it focused on A plus, but we're going to look at some ports and protocols. What else we got here? Uh, hardware devices, uh, wired and wireless Soho networks. That one's kind of interesting if you've never done that before. We'll talk about protocols. Uh, purposes and services provided by network hosts, right? You set up a network. Well, what are you doing with that network, right? It's like building a road that goes to nowhere or you build a road with no cars. We have to have something to put on that network. We'll look at network configuration concepts, network types and features, and some appropriate networking tools, which I don't have any here with me, right? Because it's, it's very difficult for me to hold things up and you really see some details. So what I did on that 2.8 is I really tried to find some decent pictures out there uh, to give you an idea of what kind of tools we're talking about. And then I'm going to go through and tell you what these tools are used for. Then in number three, we're going to get into the hardware. It's a huge chapter, all right? And it's huge, in fact, in the, in the fact that it's 27% of the exam or about 27% of that exam. So we'll not necessarily slow down, but I'll make sure I touch on every point here as well uh, because they put a lot of emphasis on this chapter. So we're going to look at cable types, features, purposes, again, lots of pictures and why we're going to use this. Uh, connector types, uh, RAM types, we'll talk, look at different uh, random access memory types. Storage devices, we'll look at motherboard, CPUs, add-on cards, uh, peripheral devices, power supplies, uh, different components for specific needs, right? I don't know if you're a gamer or if you're a CAD designer or you do audio, video editing, right? those type of workstations have specialized uh, needs, right? If you're a gamer, you need high-end graphics card, high-end uh, hard drives, SSDs, and stuff like that. I'm trying not to give the chapter away. Uh, I'm already getting excited about this. But uh, anyway, that's what we're going to cover in 3.8. Uh, 
Uh, just to continue on, this is still hardware. We're going to look at configuring some common devices, uh, Soho multifunction devices, right, like printers, copier, fax machines, those all in one devices. And then we're going to look at some various print technologies, right? We'll look at laser printers, inkjet printers, and things like that. Then in chapter four, we're going to get into that virtualization and cloud, com excuse me, cloud computing. Uh, so we'll contrast cloud computing concepts like software as a service, infrastructure as a service. And then the second part, because this is a very short chapter, as you can see, there's only two topics here, right? We'll set up and configure client-side virtualization. So what I'm going to do then is uh, that's going to be more of a demo. Uh, I'm going to go through and explain it, right, on, on well, this is what's happening, this is what's happening. But really 4.2, we're going to jump right onto the PC, uh, and I'm going to talk you through what we're going to be doing, all right? And um, in my head, I, I, I think we're going to do VirtualBox. Uh, I might try to do Hyper-V. We'll see if we have that capability uh, on here. But any virtualization works. It all works pretty much the same way. It's kind of like vehicles, right? Uh, you can go get in somebody's car or vehicle, and you can drive it. may not have all the bells and whistles yours has or vice versa, but, you know, the concept's still there. And then finally on Chapter 5, Domain 5, I guess I should say, is the hardware network troubleshooting. And troubleshooting is something, if you're an IT professional or if you're looking to get into IT, you're looking to become an IT professional, troubleshooting is something that we do on a daily basis. We do it so often that we probably don't think that we're troubleshooting, right? Especially like around the holidays, right? If you're the IT person in the family, you're troubleshooting everybody. So, oh, my tablet's not working or my cell phone's acting a little funny or you know, would you mind looking at my computer real quick and stuff, right? We're always troubleshooting. Uh, you're troubleshooting as you go through your daily routine if you're an IT professional, all right? It's just ingrained in what we do, all right? But we're gonna focus on this. We're gonna look at some practice methodologies of resolving problems. We're gonna look at it the CompTIA way, right? The way you're gonna be tested on. Uh, and I'm sure I'll say this again when we get to chapter five, but this is one of those chapters where you can't always do it the way you've done it, especially in domain 5.1, because they've got specific steps laid out that they want you to follow, right? You can't jump straight to, oh, well, your hard drive's going out. And I, well, how do you even know? You didn't even, you didn't even check the power or the cables connected. You know, is there pro what? <laughs> There may be some total other problem and you're just jumping to one of the worst things it could be. So that's what I'm talking about in 5.1. Uh, five two, we're gonna. It's all troubleshooting. We're gonna look at motherboards, RAM, CPUs, and then hard drives, projectors, common mobile device issues. Again, probably some assumptions in there uh, with the mobile devices, uh, printers, and then at the end there, the common wired and wireless network problems uh, that we may have. All right. So remember, all right. This course measures the necessity skills or the necessary skills, excuse me, for an entry level IT professional. All right, again, I copied and pasted that straight off of CompTIA's website, right? Because that's what you need to know. Necessary skills for entry-level IT professional, all right? Please don't start sending a bunch of emails when you get done with this video course saying, well, I can't do this now and I can't get this job and I can't do that job. This is not meant to get you to the top of the top of the line or top of the pyramid or front of the line or anything. This is entry-level professional, all right? I'm not knocking this course whatsoever. I think A-plus is fantastic. It has been the course to take for entry-level IT professionals for years and years and years, right? I talk to students coming out of high school. I talk to students getting going into college or even getting out of college. I've talked to adults like, hey, I want to get into IT. What do you think I should start on, right? And usually I got a couple of questions. What is it you like to do, blah, 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 blah. But inevitably, we usually come back to A-plus, Net-plus, or Sec-plus, Right, so this is A+, this is what we're gonna focus on. That's the end of the 220-1001 overview. I'll see you in domain one here in just a few minutes.